Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about how to communicate between two Arduinos using the I squared C communication interface. Um, what we have set up here is an Arduino acting as a master and a second Arduino acting as the slave. So we're going to be communicating from master to slave and then slave to master. So uh, this can get a little tricky and there's a few things in here that I actually discovered while doing this that, uh, that really uh, messed me up for a while. So basically what we have here though is on the slave we have a uh, CDS, a little photo resistor here that's, that's measuring how much light is hitting it and it's sending that value over to the master where the master then outputs that value, scales it and then outputs it to an, R an LED there. Okay, and then we also have an LCD on the slave that is displaying this raw value. Once it sends it over, then it brings it back and displays it on the screen. And then it also displays a little message with the counter, and you'll see that in the code. So as far as hooking this up, the I squared C pins. There's two pins. There's a clock and a data line, and those are analog pins four and five. I actually forget which is which, so just connect 4 to 4 and 5 to 5. So the 5 and the 4 pin connect together. It's, it's a bus topology. So you could actually connect multiple Arduinos up using this. And I think you can connect up to 128 devices because it's a 7-bit address. Um, of course, then you'd have a, a lot of other problems. But anyways, you could connect a lot of Arduinos up together. One thing to note, though... And I don't, I'm not sure why this um, is really necessary completely, but you need uh, pull-up resistors on the clock and data lines, okay? And I have that right here. So there's a 10K pull-up to 5 volts. So just basically a resistor between the pin 5 and 5 volts and pin 4 and 5 volts. Um, the data sheet recommends pull-up resistors, but I found that without the resistors it still works fine so I'm sure once you start cascading a lot of these Arduinos you would need those resistors so anyway that's pretty much all there is to the hardware and you can see the LED kinda brightening and dimming as I wave my hand over the photo cell so uh, let's now jump over to the code alright on the left we have the LCD Arduino and on the right we have the LED Arduino. Now remember the LED Arduino is the master in the I squared C interface. And on the, the left here we have the LCD Arduino which is the slave. Okay. Now remember that we could have multiple masters, multiple slaves in this. But for this example I'm going master to slave and then slave to master. So in order for the slave to communicate with the master we need to request data by the master to the slave and this will make more sense as we go along and uh, you know remember there's a million ways to do this and this is just one example to get you started with your I squared C project and and there are a lot of little tricks in this that I I was surprised I found so uh, here anyway here we go in both uh, codes we have the uh, we have to include the wire dot library on the LCD side there's just you know the basic LCD setup we set up some variables who cares about for now um, same thing over here once we get into the setup right here we do the wire dot begin and since it's the master we don't need to assign it any address on the slave side we do have to assign it an address and I just named it uh, uh, all all ones for the uh, the lower bytes so basically what we have here is zero 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 and then four ones one 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 and uh, and the reason it's seven bits is that's just the way I squared C all the addresses are seven bits okay and I didn't really have to do it in this binary form I could have just uh, you know I could have just made it 15 you know and that would have been the same um, so anyway I don't want to screw up my code here but I just prefer when I'm working with I squared C to use binary numbers just so I remember that it is seven bits and I don't go over okay so anyway let's continue on here uh, on the slave side 
we have to declare what we do or where we go when we receive data and where we go when we are uh, being requested to send data and that's what these two little lines here do so wire.onreceive says when data is coming down the pipe to me go to data ready subroutine so down here I have a avoid data ready uh, function down here with an integer no bytes so inside here what this variable here is is when data is coming down it's going to tell me how many bytes are coming down so I can anticipate or get ready to set up and read until you know there are no bytes left so I know how, what to set my for loop to when I'm reading I don't use it here but I'm just explaining what that is um, and then also we have a wire dot on request so when the master asks us to send data we go to this subroutine to send data so this is really cool and I wanted to point this out because you know the difference here between what we're doing uh, in hardware serial and software serial is that we sort of have to be in our code at that perfect time to receive the data whereas in this we have interrupts so as soon as data is being sent to us we don't have to be anywhere in our code listening for that data it'll automatically jump out of the code and go to that routine and grab the data that can be sort of troublesome too if you're in the middle of doing something important you know and then it it rips you out of your code to go get data I mean it'll put you back but anyway that could be a little troublesome and I'll show you an example of why that is here in a second alright so let's now jump back over to the master because really if you look here after it sets up it sits in the loop and does nothing on the slave side okay now we jump back over to the master here and in its loop well we write to that LED and then we do a wired out begin transmission with that slave address the 000111 one sorry four ones and then we do a wire dot write of a dollar sign which is just you know a symbol uh, that I picked out of where randomly to start the data transfer basically so we sent the dollar symbol then we send a little sentence then we send a hash symbol uh, and then we send a uh, variable here counter then we send low then we send high these are all variables and then we do a wire dot end transmission and then we increment the counter and this continues through for a while and basically what it what it's doing here is it's displaying on my LCD once it lands over here I'm counting some number counter and then it increments it so it goes from 0 to 255 and just keeps looping that so let's just jump back over here to see this in real time how it's happening so remember when we are receiving data we we jump down to this data ready subroutine here and uh, if we do a wire dot read in our where we uh, it's equal to this dollar sign then we go into a for loop and you know a lot of this is carried over from my other videos so this is kind of a a clunky way to do this but anyway so four i is equal to zero i is less than a hundred i plus plus so it, it just starts reading data in until it hits that hash symbol so basically we read this I'm counting until you hit this hash symbol and then break so it breaks out of the for loop then what I do is and this is interesting why I did this but right after that I do a message of I is equal to wired out read so then I just want to grab the next um, variable here which is counter in I so it's replacing what the hash symbol was in for counter um, and then of course the message length is equal to I since I broke right there at I I probably could have used the uh, number of bytes there but anyway so we, we still have two bytes left the low and the high byte which I'll get to what those are here in a second and that dumps it into low and high and then we clear the LCD then we print the message to the LCD um, 
Then I do one right after that. See, I'm, I'm doing character of message of I because these are all characters, bytes. I'm, you know, the letter I, the, so you want to go through all the letters. And then right after that, we do an integer of message I for the counter value. Which is kind of why I broke all this this out the way it is because it's hard with I squared C to send data over as characters or integers. It just gets all garbled up. So at the end, I just decided to separate out that value into an integer. Okay, then we jump down to the second row on the LCD and we do an LCD print of the high, the low. And then we combine those two values into a single value and word of high and low. So uh, you might want to watch my other videos to get into that, why I did that anyway. So it sends all that data, then it does a wire.end transmission. We got all the data now over here. We then uh, set the PWM value. Um, which is an analog read. Remember, this is the LCD Arduino, which has the photo cell. So we're doing an analog read of the PWM value. Then we, since the value is from 0 to 1023, and we can only send bytes, which are 0 to 255. So a value of 1023 is too big to send. We have to break it into the low byte and the high byte. And that's what's here. So now it's starting to make sense why I have low and high. So we do that. Ah. Then we have to do something kind of creative here. All right, let's pause this code over here and let's jump back over here now. So then what we do after we send all the data out from the master, we wait about 25 milliseconds for it to finish off what it's doing. And then it jumps, once it's finished doing all of this, and we'll come back to this little piece of code here in a second, it'll go back to the loop. So then we wait 25 milliseconds, and then we do a wire dot request from the slave, that address, three bytes, okay? And then we go into a while wire dot available, and basically we're reading in, we wanna read in the dollar sign and the low and high byte. That's all the three bytes we care about. So when we do this wire dot request, this code's gonna jump out of the loop, and it's going to go to the data request. God darn it. Okay, it goes to the data request routine here. So if we go down here, it's pretty simple. It does a wire dot write of data to send, this variable. It's not really a variable, though, it's a string. That's why when I was up here, I set up data to send here as a three byte string. So dollar sign one, two. The one, two mean nothing, but the dollar sign are, are fixed. Here's fixed. So, all right, this is important because the first thing you'd want to do when you get a wire dot request over here is send first, just like I did up here. I would like to have this exact, sorry, I would like to have this exact code here where I do a wire dot write of the dollar sign, then I do a wire dot write of the low, then I do a wire dot write of the high. The problem is, though, when you're communicating from the slave to the master, you cannot do individual write commands. You have to send all of your data in one packet. Okay, so you can't have you can't have multiple wire dot writes, wire dot writes. So you can't have three wire dot writes sending three bytes. It has to all be in one packet. So I had to combine it all into one string to receive it over here and this is what really hung me up for a while. So when I do this wire dot request from for three bytes, now it makes sense why I set the individual addresses of that string here. So the first zero address of that string is set to the dollar sign, the first to low, the second to high. And this is the low and high byte of the uh, analog read of the photo cell. Then it sends the whole thing as a single string, okay, which is contains three bytes. And that sends it over here, and then we pick it up right here. So, and just for data quality purposes, I always do if wire.read is equal, equal to the dollar sign, knowing that we did get the string right, then the following reads low is equal to the integer of the wire.read and high is equal to the integer of wire.read. Okay, so we read the three bytes out. 
Then we combine them, data in equal to word of high low. So now we have combined those two bytes into a single integer of a number from 0 to 10, 23 or whatever. Okay, so over here now, then we do some scaling here, no big deal. Just so that in my room here where I'm at, I can uh, wave my finger over the photo cell and it does brighten and dim. And we do some scaling here, no big deal. All right, jump out of all this. And now we're back to the loop and we restart the whole thing. And we write that value that we just had to pin three on the LED Arduino. Okay, and it, redo it, do it goes through that over and over again, very, very fast. Now the reason for this delay here, and this is something you can tweak with, so is that it's after we write data, then we request data. So it's just, you wanna make sure you have a decent delay in there before you request data from it, because it will pull it out of this code here while it was in the middle of processing something to go back and, um, and send data, okay? So anyway, I'm getting off here on a tangent, but that's how you can communicate with, uh, with two Arduinos. And by the way, if you wanted to daisy chain these and get 128 devices, you could have a single master that pulls data out from the slaves and then sends that data. So if you wanted to communicate between two slaves, the master would have to get the data from the first slave, then send it to the second slave. So you could do that that way, or you could have multiple masters. I haven't done that yet, but anyway, that's how to communicate with two Arduinos using the I2C interface. Thanks for watching.